Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today, we have an unboxing video of sorts. Remember back in the day when you got your very first CDR? Magical. We were talking about getting CDs. We were using CDs and installing software and listening to music and all those things. And you think back and you go, hey, what do you mean I can actually write software and music to a CD recordable disc? And, you know, back in the day, I remember quite well that, I, you know, I got my very first CDR. This happened to be one of the brands I had. And I remember being 10 to $15 for one CD. And essentially, I remember getting this and going, hey, you know, it'd be really cool to be able to record onto this. So I popped this in my CD-ROM drive not knowing the difference at the time. I was a young kid. You know, I was very disappointed I couldn't do that. So I went out and I said, Dad, you know, I want a CD burner or whatever they call those things. I want to be able to copy music and write my own CDs and copy data and store data. It'd be so cool. Anyway, you know, just reliving the past in that uh, aspect. So today we are going to introduce unboxing of the Hewlett Packard CD Writer Plus 8210i. So let's get right to it. And here we are with our Hewlett Packard HP CD Writer Plus 8210i. I believe I explained on one of my other videos before, I used to have the CD Writer Plus 7200 series. Now that specific uh, drive was a two speed, two speed, six speed. So two speed write, two speed rewrite, and six speed read. And like I said, I had asked and begged my parents so much. I said, when I got this disc and I couldn't write to it, and I just said, it would be so cool. You don't have to use floppy disks anymore. We can copy data and backup files and back up our music and make custom CDs and all that. And I said, wouldn't that be just awesome? And, and eventually they caved in and we spent quite a bit of money on the 7200 drive. Now, this is not a 7200, but at the time, this would have cost anywhere between $599 all the way up to $999, depending on where you had purchased it and when you had purchased it. And this one here, I had featured on the Thrift Finds video. You know, I'm really excited to open this up with everybody. Now, I have already opened up this box because when I had gotten it, I had, you know, moved the box around and it was just banging around in there. So uh, what happened was is that the material they had used to pack the actual drive had disintegrated because it was so old, sitting in the box, new old stock. And yeah, uh, needless to say, I wanted to secure that a little more before uh, storing it again. So, Hewlett Packard Expanding Possibilities Performance Internal IDE CD Writable Drive for PCs. Store and transport your files up to 650 megabytes per CD. And you think about it back, back in the day when you're sitting there using the floppy disks and, you know, things are starting to come out on CD and you're going, oh, you know, you can't do much with it. But then to be able to make your own was just absolutely revolutionary for what we have today. I mean, to set the stage for continuing on and back up your files fast, 100 megabytes in less than three minutes, which, of course, is much faster than I had originally had. And it includes powerful EDU software suite for writing, sharing, copying and organizing CDs, store data, music, photos, video and more to CD designed for Windows NT and Windows 98. So the one I had was for Windows 95. And I believe I had installed the 7200, like I said, on one of my other builds. So definitely had an opportunity to go through that. So on the other side here, very similar information that we had, basically a duplicate on the other side. And then just talks about how your benefits of the drive. Remember, you know, the marketing back then was so awesome. You know, today you get a drive and it just simply sits there <laughs> in a very small package out back with a little card sitting in the aisle if you want one. Save valuable time uh, through re rewritable technology. So again, this is just a CDR, but obviously this drives a CDRW as well. And then being able to rewrite and write back to that disc was just revolutionary. Using 
a and they promoted it using the CD just like you would a floppy drive. So really cool. Um, and then of course at the time I believe you still had zip drives, you had LS120 drives. When you had that, in, again they had a lot of space, but I mean this just started really changing the game. Enjoy peace of mind with the quality, reliability, and superior support you've come to expect from HP. Uh, and HP was great. I mean my very first experience with HP was the HP DeskJet 600C, and then again on the 670C, which you saw in a previous video on the channel as well, which is right up here. So be creative, storing your data, photos, music, video, and more on CD with a capacity of up to 650 megabytes or 74 minutes of audio. So really, really cool. And then it says all the cool stuff that comes with it. So it tells you about the drive, what it can do. There's the picture of the drive, which we'll take out here in a moment. Automatically back up and index your files fast. So HP Simple Tracks is their brand of the, you know, backup software. I know we take it for granted today because we have automated system and software and we have cloud environments and things like that, that back up all your data and external drives and all that. But back in the day, when you think about it, Windows 95, Windows 98 era, there wasn't much to do to back up your system. So definitely having this installed and being able to, you know, back up all of your stuff would be absolutely fun and amazing and great and experience. So quickly and safely restore all your files and operating system. So disaster recovery software probably takes a mirror image. You know, we take that for granted today for having an image of your system already pre-installed on your hard drive that you can go in through a recovery application and restore everything. Well, guess what? This actually was starting to do that. I mean, you have disaster recovery to be able to do that. Right to a CDRW in less than five minutes. It's that quick. So HP fast format. So just they're promoting the software. So this basically allowed the, it formatted the disk to be able to rewrite and re, uh, write and rewrite to the disk over and over again. So that's what it's promoting. And then it says here, Acid Music. So great, uh, create your own great sounding music CDs, adding music to presentation to project and make an impact with your audience. Really neat. And then easy CD creator and direct CD by Adaptech. Very popular piece of software. It lasted many, many years through the 90s and early 2000s. The Direct CD would be similar to writing to a floppy disk. So you pop your disk in there and it would write multi session disks to the CDR by writing multiple tracks. Of course, then you have your Adaptex software for Easy CD Creator, which we'll show as well. And then create custom labels and jewel cases for all your CDs. So Neato. Neato media label products. So it shows like a CD stomper type thing, which I actually do have a CD stomper in new old stock here, which I was going to do a video on eventually. You know, you make your own labels for the CDs. You know, you could be able to write your own label on your inkjet printer or laser printer, peel it off, pop it on there using the CD stomper that allowed you to do that. And you were good to go. All right, here we are. Let's open up the box and get inside. Oh, it's awesome. Quick start instructions. Look at that. A whole bunch of different information here to be able to how to install the CD Writer Plus. Usually these are like on a card or something in the box, but uh, neat that they printed this right on the box itself. So don't throw out your box. And then it tells you about the jumper settings, you know, basically get, get it all pre-configured, get it all set up prior to doing it. So that way you have a good uh, step forward into getting this installed. Here we are, and that's what it was. So you can see the drive that I have in there just kind of, it's still sealed, but I have the drive just kind of wedged in there because it was literally like on its side, flipped around in the box, and it was like on the side in here. And I said, no, no, it's too, too out of the, it's banging around there, and it wasn't making me feel comfortable. So I wanted to pull it out. So let's get this on the bench here, our brand new drive. And we'll do the same thing here. This is just a caddy that actually held it. And you can see this material that was used to kind of hold it in place. It would have been like a rubberized material, but now it just it completely disintegrated. As you can see, it's doing that in my hands now. And that was what the condition it was in. And then here we are. We have all the extra stuff that they give you. And looks like they give you some labels and stuff. So we're going to put the box aside for now. So what does this come with? Well, we have the start of the show itself. Now, I believe that the 8210, the 8200, and then a different, uh, different nomenclatures and models basically had different features and different write speeds and read speeds. And so this is a 24 speed readable CD-ROM drive. And then of course, writing and rewriting at 4X. And some of them had 4224, some had 
four four thirty two. It depended on the drive. This was manufactured June of nineteen ninety nine. So the one that I had, I believe, was in ninety seven. Was the uh, the seventy two hundred series? The I on the end of this in, implies um, internal, and then you had an E on the end, so that this would have been an external enclosure that plugged in via parallel port on the back of your computer or other methodologies. But yeah, it's just really cool to see this still sealed with the Hewlett Packard uh, seal. I almost don't want to open this, but we're going to. We have to. It's it's here to open. Okay, what else is inside here? So actually, well, before we go there, we'll see what this is. So we have the Neato here. And so this is all the different things. It tells you the applications are here, the software that we have installed, and then it, you know, see Neato CD label applicator. So it gives you a whole system. Now, it doesn't come with this, I don't think. It comes with this? No, I don't think it does. So we have the CD Writer Plus with all that stuff that was inside there. User's Guide. It's just so cool to be able to see all the user guides today and, you know, compared to everything's on CD now. You get you get this and you get a, a thin CD or a USB or even now you get this in a website that say go download the, the software if you need it or drivers or if, if you need it or, or the software. But you know, having this was just, it made the experience. Opening this up, going through this whole thing, to me, this was just part of the experience, you know, reading the instructions, going through everything. So it tells you about all the different stuff that you can do to use this as well as install it and the software. And then there's also some troubleshooting. So this tells you how you to install Windows 3.1 and DOS as well as 95, 98 and Windows NT4. NT4, that's another one I should do a video on, NT4. I'd like, I'd like to explore that operating system. So it tells you all the different uh, things you can do. And of course, all the different applications. There's the HP da disaster recovery. That's really neat. Uh, well, yeah, we won't go through the book. You guys can read for sure. But, you know, if this is not on archive.org or if anyone needs that, I'm very happy to upload that. Okay. Our next item is CD Writer Plus software. So I just love this little packet. Look, still sealed. Look at that. Right from 1999. So we're talking 24 years old here. And then however else older that, uh, you know, my other system was. So I'm just going to do a little slit in this just to open it up. Um, I hate to do this, but, you know, it's it's got to be opened one day. And I did say on the Thrift Find video that we were going to open it. So there we go. There we go. We broke the seal. We are opened up. Here we are. Fresh, fresh, fresh software. Install this software on this CD first. So, you know, again, there's a quick guide that allows you to understand what to do here. But yeah, just really neat to have all this software. So we have Sonic Foundry Acid software, and then we have Neato CD Labeler software, which would be all your formats and your, your, like your, your guides and things like that to be able to load the software into your laser printer to be able to print onto the uh, labels, which allow you to be able to stamp it on your freshly copied burned CD. Okay, and of course, burning came from the fact that it uses a laser to copy the data, and that was nicknamed burning CDs or burning software. Really need to have that as well. So let's look at this. Two brand new, fresh, sealed <laughs> media. So we have our CDR and we have our CDRW. And if you notice, you have the model numbers of these actual, the, I mean, these are called part numbers, right? So they allowed you to order these directly from Hewlett Packard. And then of course, it's a Hewlett Packard drive, no different than if using Hewlett Packard ink and in their ink printer, they would really promote using this and doing that. You know what, I use these and they use work just fine for what we were. And I actually couldn't think of it. I think I had kept my CDRW at the very least for many, many, many years after that. I think actually I had actually discovered it recently in the last 10 years. Okay. And we have our audio cable, but because you know, this is a CDR uh, w drive, but it's also a, just a CD-ROM drive as well. It reads at 24 speed. So you can actually put a CD in there The you know, this could be an addition to, if you wanted to make it a slave to your primary drive or you could just make it your primary drive in your computer when you install it. So this allowed you to play music via CD onto your, through your sound card. And that's what you use that, uh, that uh, for. And then you'd also have your IDE cable. Look at that fresh IDE cable, never opened. I love it. It also has some screws in here for that CD drive as well, which is amazing. And I was completely wrong. It does come with the Neato applicator, the CD applicator. So definitely have to figure out how to use that, but uh, it'd be really cool to see this in action as well. And the next step we're going to do is get a system all set up to install this drive. Here we go.
I hope everyone remembers this computer. This was one of the E-Way systems that we completely restored in the channel using the Matrox Millennium G200 video card, as well as the 3DFX uh, Voodoo 2 card that we put in here as well. So definitely cool and exciting. And if you notice, we have the Hewlett Packard CD Writer Plus 7200i in here. So this was the drive that I was telling everyone about that was one of my first drives. This is going to be an upgrade video to this disk drive. So I think what we'll do is, you know, there were some comments about why do we have two disk drives in here? And I always loved the fact that you could pop a CD in here, pop another CD in here that you wanted to copy to, uh, to back up your music or whatever. Uh, and, you know, I always liked having that ability versus popping a disk in, doing, writing it to the hard drive temporarily, and then having it go back to the CD disk itself. I think what we'll do is we'll just upgrade the drive that's in here to the new one. And I thought it'd be really cool to do this on this system and bring it back to the channel. So let's take the cover off and get it all situated here. Okay, and here we are all situated here. So let's go ahead and open up the side panel to this system. And I am just realizing I am opening up the wrong side. <laughs> Flipped around, here we go, back on the right side. And I, I loved uh, the comments on this particular build that I had done because everybody was uh, commenting and saying that, uh, well, first off, many aspects. One, this system, I believe, has 98 second edition on it. Uh, there's also the fact that a lot of people were saying that they love the video card that's in this and the video card set up, you know, 2D, 2D and 3D capabilities. So that was really cool, especially of the era. This is also a Pentium 2 system, uh, which is also nice. So just all a really good, well-rounded system. I'm glad to have this in the um, in the collection. And I'm glad I was able to do this build and get this fully restored. And as you can see, everything is nicely tucked away in there as we left it. Because these just go to storage for now. <laughs> that beautiful 3D FX card in here. And then, yeah, just a, just a beautiful system. And as everyone knows, I like the spinning rust. And so <laughs> I definitely installed that in here. So uh, just a beautiful board, beautiful, there's our two video cards that are linked in the back here with the cable. And then we have our sound card, which I believe is a Sound Blaster, yep, yeah, Sound Blaster 16 card in there as well. Uh, just a really good system for what it is. Okay, so what we're going to do is worry about that drive. And that drive that we're going to take out, that 7100, or sorry, 7200 uh, drive, I'm going to unscrew the two screws here. I'm pretty sure that I screwed in on the other side as well, but we'll see. Okay, here we are on the other side with the side taken off here. I just love working on these systems. And, I, and I, what's really cool about this case as well is it has the removable case. So the two screws here and this whole thing just kind of pops out and exposes all the components versus having to work around inside there, trying to get your hands in there, especially tight places. So really good to have there as well. So let's get this dry. The screw's kind of like on an angle here. Let's get that out. We have our Hewlett Packard. Uh, 2x, 6x IDE CD ROM drive, awesome, and showing the manufacturing date on here, I'm just looking for it, October of 1998. So here is our new drive, brand new sealed, I just don't want to break the seal, but I have to do that for this uh, video, otherwise we would have to stop here. So I'll go ahead and open this up, there we are, just trying to not break that... Uh, Break the Hewlett Packard. There we go. We're able to do it so far. Look at that. Just trying to keep all the materials all part of the part of the experience. There we go. We got that off. All good. And there it is. There's our brand new old stock Hewlett Packard beautiful CDRW drive. Okay, let's pop that in the front here and we'll slide it in. And like I said, I take advantage of these screws and use use them as leverage to kind of line up the drive here. And, you know, just by looking at it, I can see that the above drive up top is not lined up properly, but that's fine. We have that in there now. So the next thing we're going to do, it, it gives you multiple recommendations. Now, this is probably going to complain because this is an upgrade and it has the old software installed for the other drive. And because it's older, the firmwares and software and all that that's installed for this may cause some conflict. So when we first turn this on, we're gonna have to uninstall all that software, start it back up and install the new software so I can text it properly. Okay, I'm gonna pop that IDE, actually, you know, 
I didn't check this beforehand as to what this is. So I'm gonna check the back of this. This is set to slave. So I'm gonna do the same thing and move this over to slave. So we'll pop on the IDE cable, which is conveniently right here. Actually, yep, yeah, right there, it's fine, perfect. I thought the Molex was on the other side, but it's not, so we're good to go. And then we'll pop the Molex on, power connector, red to red. There we are, we have that on there. And yes, we are good to go. So we have our two drives and nothing else changed. You look at that beautiful Pentium 2 slot one processor. Let's get this all sorted out, get uh, everything kind of put back on and get this system all fired up. Okay, we're back and we're all set up here. And what better yet to have than an HP monitor, an HP keyboard, and an HP mouse for our HP CD Writer Plus. Have to give it great homage here. Okay, just look at this beautiful Pentium 2 system with a 3DFX card. I just love that label. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hit the power button. There's our Pentium 2 450 computer with 256 megabytes of memory. Awesome. I had to plug the speakers in for everybody. I know, it's Windows 98, gotta hear the sound. <laughs> okay, here we are with the systems. I'm gonna go into our control panel real quickly just to make sure that, uh, our device manager, sorry, just to make sure that we are in a good place with that drive. And there it is there, HP Writer Plus A200. So it did detect the drive, no problem. That's great. And what we'll do now is pop in the CD Writer software, the main CD, because then we can install the software and make sure that it has uh, everything that we need. So this is step one, install the disk. Now I'm doing this a little backwards. It told me to install the software first and then install the drive. Imagine a case there were driver problems or what have you, but this should work just fine. Sure store CD Writer Plus. That's such a beautiful site. Brings back a lot of great memories for me. I'm so excited back as back in the day when you were a kid and installing the software and just yeah, just even thinking about that you can install the uh, install the uh, and, and copy CDs and make CDs of your own. So watch installation video, exit, explore the CD language volume. Ooh, this is that cool tunes. Okay, enough of that. All right, we'll turn it down and we'll go install CD Writer Plus. Yes. Why wouldn't we want to? CD Writer Plus drive setup. Okay, welcome to the setup. We'll hit next. Of course, we read the agreement. And so we want to create a CD, HP Simple Tracks, Disaster Recovery, and Online Manuals. Awesome. Hit next. There we are, installing all the necessary files and software, maybe they make it pretty easy back then, you know, compared to the Windows 3.1 days or earlier. <laughs> Congratulations, the installation of your C-Rare Plus was successful. Awesome. Yes, we want to restart the computer. It's always good practice to do. We install new software, new hardware, always do the restart so it's always fresh. <laughs> I love this. We have the drive installed. We have all the software installed. So it is coming up with a little bit of warning here. It says DirectCD EXE. So DirectCD is the software that would write to the CD no different than if it was a floppy drive. So the program may not run correctly on Windows 98 because of enhanced operating system features for information about obtaining an updated version, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to click on cancel for now. Uh, we're not going to be utilizing the direct CD for what we're trying to do here. What do you want to do? We want to make a music CD. We want to copy an existing CD. We want to make a data CD for the easiest way by dragging and dropping. So that's that direct CD we talked about earlier. Make a data CD that is most compatible with other CD-ROM drives. 
So this would be like a data, like a data CD of some sort. Create disaster recovery floppies and CDs to use in the event of a system crash. So pretty cool that you had that considering back in Windows 98. Then set up a schedule to automatically back up your files to CD with HP Simple Tracks. So that's the software that allowed you to back up your, you know, your your Word documents and your Excel documents and everything back then. So I believe back then you'd be running Office 95 or Office 97. So really, really cool. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to remove the software CD that uh, had all this for the installation. And, you know, because I want to preserve this. And again, if you have uh, any inkling, this is not on archive.org. Please let me know in the comments down below. I'm happy to uh, move these up to archive.org to preserve them. The same thing with the additional software. I'll bring them out again just for the sake of preservation. We have Sonic Foundry Acid. Again, just uh, music software and then Neato CD labeler software with the templates and all that. So if these aren't on archive.org, please let me know and I'm happy to upload them as well. Now, I think what we need to do next is I'm going to copy an existing CD to actually test the drive out. And that's one of the features I like about this system. And I'm going to do this the way I would have done back in the day. I always had two drives. I had a primary drive of some sort, and I always had the CD uh, writer, CD rewriter drive as my secondary. And I like that because it's, it's immediate. It works back and forth. So we're going to do that today. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do this. I want to back up this disk because this disk is one of my originals from way back when, and I want to make sure I get a copy of it. So it's Unreal, the original Unreal. And this is my original. I regret not keeping the box. I had one of those shadow boxes uh, style ones that had the cutout in the center of the box. So definitely some good memories there. So, I mean, it is in great condition, despite the fact I would have used that quite a bit as a, as a kid, but I'm going to pop that in here now. And then we're going to open the CD Writer Plus drive and we're going to pop in the TDK CDR. I'm using one of these original ones, and this is quite old as well. The manufacturing date on these discs, I believe, are the late 90s as well. So we'll pop that disc in, and hopefully it's held up over the years. We'll hit that. Okay, all good. So now we have our two discs in here. All right, so we're going to copy an existing CD. That's what we want to do, because we're going to copy the disc from A to B, we have our D drive, so it's reading the contents of it. Now it's testing the actual copier, the performance of the CD re reader right now. Just making sure that I can keep up with what it needs to do. And then destination CD recorder drive is the HP CD Writer Plus 8200. You can see that the software is automatically populating everything. And right now it's scanning both just to make sure that everything's going to be compatible with what it wants to do. Now you have a couple options. I'll walk everyone through this. So we can go test, we can do test and copy, or we can just do direct copy and ask you how many copies, because it will do is it will take what it needs to do. And then you can, it'll just prompt you as you're copying to put in a new CDR each time. One is fine for what we're trying to do today. Click on advanced, and then you can actually choose the speed at which you want your CD required, recorded record. Now it was an issue more so back in the day versus today where you know these cds are compatible with different style or different speeds you know in this particular case it the maximum that this cd rw drive can go is four speed now this disc can go up to eight speed six speed and eight speed if this was a two speed disc for example and we could write it four you could stretch it and try it it's best, it's recommended best that you do this. So I'm going to keep to the four speed. The maximum speed is fine. It says copy source CD to the hard drive first. This spe can speed up making multiple copies. So what I'm doing is proposing we're copying one to the other. That naturally would happen if I only have the CDRW drive only. And we're not doing that. So I'm going to click on four speed. We're okay with that. We're not going to check that box. We'll leave it as is. We're going to hit copy. That's fine. And we're going to go back to source and destination just to confirm. So we have our Acer drive, our 36 speed, clearly telling me what the contents are. We have our E drive, which is the HPC Writer Plus A200. That's our brand new drive we just opened up from the box and installed in the system. And we're going to click on copy. And here we are, recording phase. So preparing to write the track. 
it's so cool to see this from back then and look at the different interface versus, you know, something in today where CD burning and CD writing doesn't require software today. It's just natively built into the operating system. So seeing this is just really, really cool. So it says recording phase. So it's telling you it's writing block 23 and then it's moving forward of so many blocks to the disk. And it says bytes remaining. So it says how many, how many megabytes is left from the disk to copy. The estimated time remaining. So it says 12 minutes. And then right now it says tracks one written skipped. So, you know, this is really for if you were going to have multiple, uh, sorry, a CD with multiple tracks, for example, like an audio CD, you would have different tracks here and it would be written and skipped. It would tell you what it's doing as it's copying. And then it shows the percentage done. So as this progresses, this should start to populate a certain color. And then over here we have what's our buffer. And this is what I referred to as the buffer underrun errors that we might be having. So in this particular case, this is running at almost 100%. I mean, it goes down a little bit as it's writing the data. So if the source drive cannot keep up with the requirements of what it needs to be able to burn the CD or write to the CD, then it will start to drop immensely, very quickly. And as a result, it would cancel out. If it got to zero, it just wouldn't write it correctly. So in this particular case, we have a much faster drive than what we're running at. We're reading at 36 speed max, of course, so that's a variable. And then, of course, it's running at a maximum of four speed CD-ROM. So it's working just fine as it is, and that's why the buffer is staying at the 100%. So as you can see, it's running at the 4x 600 kilobytes a second. And then, of course, we have the recording phase. So I won't drag everyone through all of this and let it go through the entire 10, 11 minutes remaining. We'll jump cut right to the end of the disk completion. Here we go. And there we are, all finished. Recording phase, he created successfully. So you see the little check mark here. It says total one, written one, it shows 100% done and looks perfect. So I'm gonna take the disc out of the drive and we're gonna write on it right away. And we're gonna write on Unreal, so I don't forget what it is. And we'll use our wonderful Sharpie for that. And yeah, so we've backed up my copy of Unreal. That's really exciting. And thinking back to when you were back in the day, this was just awesome. You can see the data that's been written to the disk and that's awesome. So we'll close that up. I'm gonna close the burner and reopen the um, Acer drive just cause I wanna get my uh, disk back out of there. It's really awesome. I never thought to do this before. I don't know why, just never did made a backup of my Unreal disk. So we're gonna pop that back on here. You can do more than just copy CDs with this uh, this burner. So obviously, you know, under the software application, it gave you different things. So when you click on create a CD, it gives you different options. So you wanna make a music CD, as we said, we, we chose copy an existing CD, but we had walked through this already. So you wanna make a music CD, tells you about the different types to make. It'll bring up Easy CD Creator. So it'll give you some sort of idea what you want to do. Do you want to do a data CD or an audio CD? You know, we're not going to do this today, but you can choose audio CD and then choose different MP3 tracks that you might have had on your system back in the day. And the same thing with data CD. You just want to make a simple data CD if you want to make a CD containing, you know, data files from your computer. This type of CD can be read back on any computer CD-ROM drive. So I want to back up my Word docs, my Excel docs. I want to make like a permanent kind of record. Now this is not to be confused with the direct CD option where you would drag and drop it to the drive itself, similar to what you would have done like a floppy disk. That's not what this is. This is when you want to actually make like a backup of your uh, files just to have a permanent backup. So you choose data CD and then you go in here and then of course, you know, you do that and that. And then we also have the CD, the, the dual case layout. So this here actually is just a template. So it actually help, helps you walk through creating a dual case uh, cover for the new CD. So instead of using the factory one, you could actually 
print it off and cut it out and put it right into this. And I mean, if you had cardstock, it'd be a little firmer and you could actually use that. So it's pretty cool. Again, simple tracks uh, for backing up files, uh, create a CD disaster recovery. Now, I imagine in the state the computer's in right now, we could click on that and it would actually do an image of the operating system. Now, I believe the operating system install for Windows 98 is about 400 megabytes, depending on what you install. And then, of course, any software that you have installed. So it would actually create that. So, yeah, I think this is awesome. I think being able to go here and you think about when you're back in 1999, when this drive came out, 98, 97, 98, when I had the other drive, thinking about what you had and you, you had hours of fun in front of you to be able to make music CDs, make covers, you know, back up your existing cds that you had it was just an exciting time but yeah I, I i think it's i think it's great and i think we've showcased that on this system to be able to install this brand new old stock cd writer plus 8200 and bring us back to 1999 by you know doing all this now i'm gonna keep these i don't plan on opening these discs i'm gonna put everything back in the box obviously just wanted to take the drive out to showcase that but hey i think it's time we test out our brand new backed up cd and pop it into the drive and keep in mind i'm putting it in a drive that wasn't created on it was created on the cd writer plus we're going to put it in the acer disc just to prove that it would work in a different uh different cd-rom drive so we're going to install unreal and we'll jump cut right to the game <laughs> And here we are. We had to play a little Unreal to make sure we could test the disc, and the disc worked perfectly. The backup we were able to do with the C Writer Plus drive. And you know what? It's such a great drive, and it's such a peak era of computing back in the day for home consumer users. Going from what they were going from in terms of computing and technology it was always advancing, always new things, and it's always a awesome time bringing this uh, Pentium 2 450 out back to the channel to be able to play some uh, some games and what have you. I'll be honest with you, I'll be leaving this out for a little bit because I definitely want to play some more Unreal. And I'll tell you, it's, it's a great experience to be able to take a new old stock drive and open it up, go through all the original items as if it, we were back in 1999. And again, if any of this is not on archive.org, make sure you please let me know and I'm happy to put that there for everybody's enjoyment. That said, thank you so much for being part of this video today. I hope that everyone enjoyed it. If you had, please give it a thumbs up. 
If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button in the top, change it to all. You'll be notified when I make new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know of your experiences with the HP CD writer or other CD writers at the time. Love to hear what you used to do with the drives. Love to hear your experiences. And heck, you know, if you want to talk about this computer, I'm happy to see that down below in the comments again. Thank you to absolutely everyone who supports the channel and the Retro Recall. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.